and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're talking about the MSI GS30 Shadow and its dock, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. So this is really quite unique, kind of different from our usual laptop reviews, that's for sure. Um, and I really like what MSI was trying to do here, it's you know, the approach they took. But let's get straight into it and talk about this laptop itself. So, uh, this thing's pretty thin, as you can see, and uh, really light. It's coming in at 1.3 kilograms, with a height of 19.8 millimeters. So that's really good, really nice, uh, slim design, I really like it. It has this nice lighting around the front, as you can see, which I quite like, although I wish you would be able to turn it off. Um, I didn't manage to find out how you could do that, so it definitely wasn't very intuitive. But uh, yeah, it still looks really nice, makes it look a bit more premium. Um, and also, it's very well built uh, with its magnesium alloy chassis, which means it's very sturdy. You know, the build quality is really solid. It, it just feels like a really premium device. Now, let's talk about I.O. in this guy. And up front, you see there's absolutely nothing. Round on the left-hand side, we have a uh, mic jack, headphone jack, USB 3.0 event, and a secure lock. Round the back, there's nothing at all except uh, the right hand side's a vent, the left hand side's nothing, and in the middle is the dock where it docks in, which we'll be talking about a bit later. Then on the right hand side, we have the AC input for the charger, uh, Ethernet port, HDMI, USB 3.0, and a multi card slot. So, all very nice there. Now, specs wise, it's coming with a Intel i7 4870HQ. So that's a quad core processor with hyper threading, 2.5 GHz base clock, and a 3.7 GHz boost clock. So, some serious power there. Now, chipset wise, it's Intel Shark Bay HM87, pretty standard. Screen wise, uh, as you can see, this is quite small, so it's a 13.3 inch uh, full HD, so 1080p anti glare display. Graphics, this is using the onboard graphics, that's Intel Iris Pro Graphics 5200. Memory, it's got a 16 gigabytes, so that's 2 times 8 gigabytes of RAM. Audio, it has a, an internal microphone, and speakers wise, we'll be talking about this soon, but it has two speakers on the bottom here, 2 watt speakers. Now storage wise, it's featuring uh, two 128 gigabyte SSDs, so that's 256 gigabytes total. Dimensions wise is coming in at 320 millimeters wide by 220 millimeters deep and as I said before 19.8 millimeters tall and warranty wise is coming with the standard two-year MSI pickup and return warranty. So let's move around to this display then and as I said before 13.3 inch 1080p display it does a pretty decent job I was actually quietly impressed by it. Um, it was really good. Uh, the viewing angles could be a little bit better, you see you get a lot of, you know, darkness, color shifting, all that funk, so that's not really that good. But um, aside from that, the general color reproduction was really good, I thought it was really nice. And of course, being a 1080p display at this um, screen size, 13.3 inch, you get a really nice amount of pixels per inch, so I really liked that too. Now I can't say the same about the sound, and oh. Uh, so, downwards facing speakers aren't really that ideal to start uh, to <laughs> start off with, so uh, these two under the bottom here. But they just, you know, they sound way more muffled than you usually would. And of course if you put it on like a couch or bed or on your lap or something like that, it's going to sound even more muffled. But even just on a desktop, um, it just didn't sound that good. And the biggest problem I ran into was that the volume wouldn't go high enough. I was constantly maxing out the volume and it just wasn't enough. So. Yeah, it's just not good in that area. The sound quality is decent, although it's a little bit on the tinny side. You're just wanting, you're just left wanting more, basically, in the audio department. So I wasn't very impressed in that sense. Now, keyboard-wise, so the layout is pretty good. I was fairly happy with it. Um, they could have again put the functions, some of the main functions, down on the arrow keys, which I usually like, but this wasn't too bad because it's kind of a bit more of a compressed keyboard layout, so it was fine having them up on the function keys. The key travel itself was really nice. Um, I thought it was really good to type with, easy, pretty predictable. 
And of course the backlighting, as you can see there, looks pretty good. Um, I quite like backlit keyboards for the most part these days, especially if you're going to be doing typing at night. It's also quite handy to have. But yeah, the keyboard was pretty decent, and the touchpad was also pretty decent. Um, one of the best I've used in a while as well. It was really accurate. It slides really easily, which sounds like it's you know that's something they all should do. But you know, believe me, some laptops I've used that your finger does not slide easily on it. It's like sliding a finger over a glass window. Um, gestures worked really well, like scrolling stuff with it, zooming in, zooming out. All that was really easy. And uh, the only issue I had was sometimes clicking was a little bit funny, but uh, maybe that was just me. I, uh, yeah, it was still pretty good. It's just with some things, clicking on them, like doing right and left click, and that was a little bit funny sometimes. But that was about it. Now, webcam-wise, you're getting just a standard 720p 30fps uh, webcam that's going to you buy for whatever you might be doing, conference calls, all that sort of stuff. Now, the dock. So this is where we're going to talk about that. Now, let me grab this big thing over. Ooh, okay, here we are. Here's the dock. Okay, <laughs> so it's not very appealing uh, from the outside, and we will explain what it does in a minute. But uh, in the front, you get some dual speakers, which are absolutely terrible. Oh my god, they are so bad. So just pretend it doesn't even have any speakers in the front. Over on the left-hand side, we turn this around. See, it has a 450-watt uh, power supply. And your I.O. of your desktop graphics card will go in there. Yes, desktop graphics. Nothing much on the back, so we may as well not even look over there. And on the right-hand side, we see that it has uh, four USB 3.0 ports, a Ethernet port, headphone and mic jacks in it, and a 90mm fan. And then going over to the top, we have the docking mechanism itself and where you dock the laptop. So, what is the point of this? Well, it takes uh, any desktop, MSI desktop GPU, so I tried it with a GTX 960 and a GTX 980, as you can see the dock up there, that's a PCIe 3.0 16x slot. Um, so basically what you do is, uh, it's well, okay, before we explain what it does, we'll explain the rest of the internal. So yeah, it takes a desktop GPU, you can also uh, fit a 3.5 inch drive in there if you want some more storage. Um, it's all on a custom PCB and all the cables are already in there. Uh, so what you do is you will sit the laptop on the top of this and slot it in and then it basically allows you to harness the desktop graphics. So it will still be using the uh, G the laptop's um, i7-4870 HQ processor and then the system memory and that, but it will be using the desktop graphics on board and if you have a drive in there it will be using that drive as well. So that's quite cool. Um, it's really easy to slide in. Installing is a little bit tricky, but yeah, um, for the most part, it's pretty good. So the reason why I want to test it with a GDX 960 is because that's quite a middle, good middle ground um, NVIDIA GPU right now. And I want to test it with a GDX 980 just to see if you would lose anything on the pass-throughs. So let's get into the benchmarks then. And uh, we'll start out with the CPU. So in the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, the benchmark within that software, it scored 903 marks. That's a pretty solid score. Now onto some more of the graphics benchmarks. So I did this with both uh, the GDX 960 in the dock and a GDX 980 in the dock. So in Unigen Valley on the Extreme HD preset, with the 960, it scored 34.5 frames per second average. And with the 980, it scored 66.1 frames per second average. So, very solid there. Now, Unigen Heaven, a DirectX 11, everything maxed out. In the dock with the 960, it scored 32.1 frames per second average. And with the 980, it scored 64.9 frames per second average. Now, moving on to some games. So, Tomb Raider, everything maxed out, 1080p. With the 960, it scored 58.5 frames per second average. With the 980, it scored 91.7 frames per second average. So really good scores there. And lastly, Shadow of Mordor, a really high requirement game. Uh, with the 960, it scored 48.1 frames per second average. And with the 980, it scored 91.5 frames per second average. And uh, if you're wondering if it loses anything um, going from the laptop through that PCI 3.0, and uh, into the dock itself, you know, uh, you, you're not. 
uh, these results were near identical to the ones I get with my rig, with my 4770K in it, and all the other fun stuff I have in my um, personal rig. So yeah, there's, you don't lose anything on the way through, and the 980 performs just as well as it should. So really impressive performance there. So yeah, you don't lose anything. It's pretty much desktop grade performance coming out of it based on what uh, whatever GPU you're going to be using. You're not going to be losing anything. So very, very impressive there. I really liked it. And just in general, gaming just felt the same. All the games I played, everything. It just didn't feel any different. So I was really impressed with performance. This thing is really good. Now, heat and noise. And this is where it kind of goes astray. So heat-wise, it didn't do too bad. During that benchmark with the CPU, it went up to 87 degrees Celsius. So that is getting quite toasty, although it's, you know, not thermal throttling or anything, so that's fine. And in the Unigen Valley Extreme HD test, the 960 went up to 61 degrees Celsius and the 980 went up to 71 degrees Celsius. These are the uh, MSI uh, Twin Frozer Edition cards. And, uh, uh, the Gaming 4G, I should say, <laughs> since they changed the name, you guys know what I mean. And, uh, during the Unigen Heaven 4.0 testing, the, uh, 960 went up to 60 degrees Celsius and the 980 went up to 70 degrees Celsius. So pretty good in terms of temps there. The downside is the noise. So the dock itself, that 90 millimeter fan makes quite the racket. Uh, which isn't very good. However, there is a switch inside that you can uh, switch across and that will bring the fan down, you know, the fan speed down, which is good. You'll sacrifice a few degrees on your graphics temperatures. That's all right. But the problem is with the laptop. So the cooler is over here and this corner just gets like red hot. It gets so hot. And this fan in here gets so loud that it overpowers all the noise coming out of the graphics card, the dock in general. So that's where the problem is. There is so much noise coming out of this laptop uh, trying to cool the CPU. Even when you're not gaming, you're just using this laptop by itself when it's off the dock. Um, just doing general stuff. It can get be quite loud. I didn't really like it. It's, it seems to be a problem a lot of thin and light laptops have. But yeah, the noise was just way too high for me. I uh, wasn't a fan. I mean, it's nowhere near like a bricks or... Um, it's kind of mildly like a reference R9 to 90, I guess, level. Um, maybe a little bit quieter than that, but still too high for what it should be. And another disappointing thing was the battery life on this laptop. So it only got around two hours, and that's pretty pathetic, honestly. Um, it, it should definitely be higher than this. A lot of thin and light laptops we see uh, can go a lot longer than that. I think the average now for thin and light laptops, granted they won't be going on a dock, just normal ones, is about eight hours. But yeah, two hours, it just is enough. That's really disappointing. Now, software-wise, it came with all the usual stuff from MSI, quite a bit of bloatware for the most part. But uh, there were a few useful things. MSI Dragon Gaming Center, I really like because it's actually useful software. Uh, Sound Blaster Cinema 2, which you can set up the audio how you want, so some people out there might like that. And System Control Manager for just quick system controls for people out there. Um, you know, someone might find it useful, I suppose, but those are the better ones that it comes with. Which leads us now to the conclusion about the G GS30 shadow from MSI. So, uh, okay, so the laptop itself is decent. It's got a good design and good materials. Um, so I realize in that sense, this thing just feels really solid. It has a great little screen, but honestly, I wish the audio was better. It just is such a letdown in that area. The keyboard and touchpad, though, are both very solid. I was very impressed by those. Um, and in general, the, the noise is just too much with this. If you're going to do light gaming on this, which you can with the integrated graphics, I mean, it's just going to be way too loud for most people. And the battery life was, wasn't very good at all. It was pretty terrible. However, the dock is really cool. I really like it. It's, it's really unique. Um, it gives amazing performance. You don't lose anything. It's desktop great performance. Um, really good there. And it's just a great idea in general. However, this comes down to like the consumer price stuff. Um, I do find that it's a bit too expensive. Remember that unless you're getting a bundle deal, it doesn't come with the desktop GPU. You're going to have to provide that for yourself. So, all in all, it's just a bit too expensive. I can see why they're trying to go with it. And some people will like it, having everything all in one, nice and tidy. It's just a you know, nice tidy with a bow tie on top. It's really good in that sense, but it's just a little bit pricey for what it should be. But, I mean, yeah, you got to give it to them for at least trying, you know, it's a very unique thing. I really quite like what their idea was 
going with it and as I said the performance is really crazy so that is a very good redeeming factor. Now thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video and as always I'll see you guys next time.